Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at securing remote access. We'll be discussing Telnet operation, SSH operation, verifying the switch supports SSH. Then we're going to configure SSH. And finally, we're going to verify that SSH is operational. This episode is part of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. As we talk about this, setting the SVI, connecting across the network, using your network, in-band traffic to configure your devices, we have two options, two different protocols that we can use to connect in. One is Telnet, one is SSH. Pretty much industry-wide, we accept we don't want to use Telnet. The reason why is when Telnet sends information across the network, it's sent in clear text. If somebody is there on your network listening to your traffic, they can see exactly what you typed in. They can see your username. They can see your password. Here we have a screenshot of a program called Wireshark. What Wireshark does is it listens to traffic going across your network. This is what somebody trying to attack your network, this is what they would use. Wireshark connecting into your ports, set to promiscuous mode, they can see all the traffic going across your network. Here they've seen all the traffic going from your computer to the device and from that device to your computer. And as you can see here, it comes in and says user access verification. Then it says username that came from the, the device to your client. Then here you typed in saying that you typed in an A. So in red here, it says you typed in an A. On the screen, it typed in, it, it displayed an A. You typed in a D, that's in red. Then on the screen, it sent back to you, it displayed a D, M, M, I, I, N, N. So your username was admin. You can easily pull that out there once you know what you're looking for. Then it gave you an update, the device sent that it's looking for the password, and then you typed in CCNA. And so we are able to figure out that your username was admin, that your password was CCNA, because you're using Telnet. If you use the other protocol, SSH, what SSH does is it encrypts all the traffic between the client and the device you're connecting into. If somebody would intercept that traffic, what they would get is a bunch of random numbers and characters. And here, as you can see, what we get right here is saying, okay, this is what our encryption scheme is using. Diffie Hellman, Group Exchange, looking at all this. And then down here, we see that there's some random numbers and characters. This is the exchange. This is what's being sent across your network. This is the data here. It, from this, you can't get what the username is or the password because it was encrypted. Just somebody looking at your traffic is going to see random letters and characters. They're going to have a very, very hard time figuring out what that is from those random letters. To verify that your switch supports SSH, what you do is you enter in the show version command. Then in the show version command here, at the name of your software, your name of your software is right in this field here. What you're looking for here is at the end of land base, you're looking for this K9 feature. What the K9 feature does is it says it supports the cryptography, it supports the cryptographic features and capabilities, meaning it does do the encryption required for SSH. If you like this episode on securing remote access and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. To configure SSH on your switch, 
couple things need to happen first. First, you need to make sure it has a unique host name on your network. If you leave all of your switches with the default name of switch, you can configure SSH on the first switch, but then when you go to the second one with the same name, it's going to give you an error. It needs to have a unique name, and you also have to have the network settings configured. You need to give a virtual LAN, your management VLAN, an IP address, subnet mask, and then you, if you want to connect it to different networks, you need to make sure you set your IP default gateway. Once you have that configured, it's always good to go and verify that it does support SSH and you can do a show IP SSH command and it'll verify. If it lists out what it supports, it'll be there. If it doesn't list out anything, it does not support SSH. Then we go and we set up a domain name. The domain name is part of the cryptography process. And you can go in and set that by using the IP space domain dash name. And then you actually put your domain name in there. The third step is you generate your security as RSA key pair. Go ahead and generate that. You will use the crypto key generate RSA command to do that. One thing I suggest is use at least the 1024 modulus to do your encryption with. If you use the default 512, you won't support version two of the SSH. You only support version one. So when I generate my RSA crypto key pair, I always make sure it's at least a 1024. Sometimes I use a 2048 modulus there. After you do that, you, go, you have to go ahead and configure a username. We do that with the username command and we put a password in there. That has to be a user here that so that we can actually log into that device. Then we have to configure our VTY, our virtual terminal lines, to accept SSH as the input. And to do that, we have to change that transport, the transport of, of data between our devices. We And that command is transport. We want to change the input here to SSH, so transport, transport input SSH. And then we have to specify login local, meaning we have to use that local user we created to log into the device. Now, you could put other methods of doing your user password checking, your authorization in there. You could have a radius server, you could connect it to Active Directory, a number of different methods there, but I always suggest keeping login local as part of your process to log in and having a username on every device. That way, if for some reason it doesn't have access to that server to authenticate against, at least you can get in and configure your devices with that local username. And then once you have that set up, you set your transport, then make sure you're using IP version two. That supports better cryptography, uh, it's more efficient, and basically it's harder for somebody to break into your system that way. So that command is IP SSH version two. Do those steps that will configure SSH on your switch. To verify your SSH is up and functioning properly, you can kind of do it two ways. One, you can use another Cisco device. You can use that as a client to connect into the device you're doing. That's the SSH command. You put a dash L on there, then you put the username, then you put the IP address of the device you're connecting into. If you have it configured successfully, it's going to prompt you for that password, for that username you put in that command. Go ahead and enter that username in there, and then you'll be connected to that device. device. If you're going to use a Windows system, you could use uh, an SSH client. Most terminal emulating programs do have some sort of SSH client into it. Putty has an SSH client built into it. What you do is make sure that SSH is selected. By default, it's selected. Then once you select that, put the IP address in there of the device you're connecting to that you just configured SSH on. Go ahead and click open for your session. Once you do that, it's gonna ask for the username. You type in admin, then you go ahead, enter that in, and then it'll ask for your password. Put the password in, and you have now SSH'd into that device, verifying that your SSH is working successfully. Another way to verify your SSH is 
up and running is on the device where you configured it, you can enter in the show IP SSH command. And what that's going to do is give you some feedback. If it gives you information about SSH, that means it's up and it's running. If it says it's an unrecognized command or some sort of message saying it hasn't been configured yet, it's not up and it's running. If it gives you that information saying it's up and running, it'll list out what the version is. So here we're running SSH version two, authentication timeout, meaning how long do you have to enter in your password is 120 seconds and you get up to three failed attempts. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on securing remote access. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, havetechify.com, and you can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.